Cartoons have never been just for kids. The French have always known this. They can be called children's books or graphic novels or something else. In any case, they render rich artistic pleasures mixing words and images. Canapé takes a look at something old, babar, and something new, the rabbi's cat. Both give us something true. It's uh, what in French we call the tour du monde. <laughs> babar is going on a big trip around the world with his family, his wife Celeste, and his four kids. Uh, Flora, Bob, Alexander, and Isabel. I start to think of all the places I have been over the years, and uh, I enjoy very much doing illustration after photographs uh, that uh, mainly my wife <laughs> has taken when I was there. Well, it all began with my, my wife coming in my studio and uh, seeing the sketch I have made uh, out of our cat. And she said, you ought to make a, a story with our cat because it's the only thing you draw properly. And then I said, OK, this cat is eating a lot. He never brings me any money, so I have to use it for something. I put him on the, on the desk and I draw him. And uh, the, the story came afterwards. Uh, the, the other, on the other hand, my father's family comes from Algeria and I wanted to pay tribute to those uh, Arab Jews you could meet there. And I think uh, in nowadays time it's useful to, to bring up this idea that uh, there were Jews in the Maghreb. And you know, France is a magnificent laboratory because you've got the biggest Jewish community in Europe and also the biggest Muslim community in Europe. So uh, it's good to remind them where they come from. I cannot believe Baba is 75 years old now. He was born in 1931. Uh, my father created the first book after a bed story from my mother. And that was a very exciting experience for him. And he went on, 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 book one after the other for seven years. The Rabbi's Cat is about a Jewish family that lives in Algeria in the 30s and the hero is a cat. He has his beloved uh, mistress who is the daughter of the Rabbi and uh, actually the cat eats a parrot and he gets to talk. And then the Rabbi is worried maybe he will say bad words to his daughter and he will push her to do unmoral things. So he wants to take the cat away from his mistress and the cat wants to prove he can be a nice boy and he say, but make me a Jew so you'll be confident in me and then the trouble begins. So Baba is going to Italy that I always love, to, to Spain, Berlin, Moscow and then Paris, Notre Dame of course, where I was living until uh, 1985 when I came to the state. India, where he meets some Asian elephant. <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, Antarctic with icebergs, uh, where I haven't been myself. <laughs> I went into this classroom in France and I had those two 17 years old beautiful Arab girl and they came and they say, at first we did not want to read your book because it was Jewish crap. And then we read it and it was magnificent because we discovered there were as many assholes in the Jewish family than in the Arab families. And I say, well, uh, sometimes it's useful to show how it is inside a family because many, many people, they don't know that the Jews from Algeria, they used to be so close to the Arabs in their language, in their way of cooking, and even in their way of praying sometimes. Those people have been living peacefully close to each other during a long time, not because of big mystical project, but because of the everyday life. Being a painter, I had also in mind the elephant, and I just start a new story, trying to be very faithful to the style of my father. And everybody was happy, the publisher was happy, and my mother was happy. <laughs> and I went on and on like that, uh, for more than 50 years now. <laughs> In my opinion, the most funny thing to do while drawing this story is drawing this beautiful girl with her cat. Because you are never bored 
of drawing this girl who takes the cat and would scratch him and the cat talks and he and sometimes she say oh, you talk too much and the cat say I love you and so on and uh, it's very it's not only cute I, I don't try to make cute creatures I, I just like to show like uh, tenderness in process and uh, I, w when I look at my cat I have him on the, on the desk and I look at him and I make the drawing and it brings a strange relationship between him and me. It's like if he were a silent mask and I say, what is this mask telling me? Uh, and uh, that's why I like being like uh, watching reality. Has it got a beat? That used to be the question about American pop tunes. How many beats does it have? And why are they so infectious? Those are the better questions for the richesse of African music. It's difficult to say I represent Africa because Africa is so big. I'm one of the child from Africa, but I don't want to say I am. Quand on parle de paix, je pense que c'est la, la responsabilité de tout le monde de défendre la paix. If we would try to show ourselves, introduce ourselves to the American audience, we would say that Darje is the school of life, and we are the disciples in that, in that school of life. Something happened to me one time. I wasn't riding in the Long Island Railroad. Um, I, I, I fell out. I, I died. The experience I had was a dark pitch area and I felt like I spoke to God. I used to be alone and to write what I think about things in this world, that was my manner to, I don't know, to be with myself. The first time I played the electric guitar, can you imagine in Congo, in Kinshasa, I was young, look at that strange instrument, you just, just put something in the amp and the sound is boom, I was amazed. When I started seven years ago with the first album, with Nace, I didn't have any money. I never have been uh, uh, a part of a band as in general artists used to, especially Malian artists. I'm not from a great family, I'm not from Wasilu. There's not a tradition, a, a musical tradition or singing tradition in my family at all. I'm the only person who sing. When you were born and raised in Africa, um, for example in a society where you have over 25 ethnic groups, you can't afford to focus only on the American rap. That same hip-hop music 
derived from the very source of the African music, you know, which we call um, the griot music. The life of musician in Algeria. Uh, it was. Uh, it was. It wasn't easy because the situation in Algeria is. It's a disequilibre. On n'est pas stable. Je sais pas comment dire en anglais stable. Il n'y a pas de stabilité et on n'a pas des moyens pour travailler. Mais ça dépend des artistes, parce qu'il y a des artistes qui travaillent dans les cabarets et tout ça va pour eux. I have different uh, kind of music in this album. You can find flamenco, arabo andalus, African music, and classical music too. considered a pioneer of the whole house music movement. And then I did a record called, Yo, what this party started, right? Which became a huge record and did like a million copies. Um, from that point on, I went around the world touring, which quite helped me, actually led me to Tunisia, which is where I learned about the chanting and stuff like that. I know now the importance for me to, to live in that life is to be a musician. So to be a musician, it means to do what I want, what I feel inside of my, my body and my soul. Even if it doesn't work, I must really express myself. That's the, my, the big revolution in my mind now. I see you all that way. I need to work with the others and to understand what is music for the others also and to, to share some experiences and some different way of thinking and doing things. country like Senegal you know which is trying to keep his head up you know and uh, after all those years of slavery for example you know um, and uh, which is 
living somehow some 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 troubles you know like um, civil wars and stuff like that you can't afford you can't keep going you know on talking about bling bling you know calling the girls whole and stuff like that you would think about how to focus your efforts in putting through a message that is more intellectual <laughs> They call me Earth Man, and the name was uh, given to me when I was in Tunisia. And um, they gave me the name because uh, when I went out there, I got into a chanting circle, and I started chanting with them. And I, my vocals was reaching some incredible octaves, and one of the Tunisians um, called me Earth Man. J'ai pas de bagage pour euh, pour défendre des causes. J'essaye à ma façon, mais j'ai beaucoup de chansons d'amour. Euh, j'ai des chansons euh, euh, où des gens quand ils écoutent cette musique peuvent s'amuser dessus, mais j'ai pas euh, spécialement euh, des, chans des chansons euh, très très engagées. Quand on parle de paix, je pense que c'est la, la responsabilité de tout le monde de défendre la paix. I think I just try to give my drop in the ocean, you know, Africa is so big, but I just bring my, my drop. Every single breath we learn and uh, we try to bring out the lessons we've got from this life that we're living in. Et on est là à, à New York, c'est pour nous plaisir de, avec plaisir de monter sur scène et de pouvoir montrer un autre visage du Sénégal, un autre visage de l'Afrique à travers notre musique. New York City! Perhaps only the Academy Awards outrank the Cannes Film Festival in worldwide press attention. But there is a big difference. In Cannes, the Hollywood movies are the foreign films. Each May, filmmakers, critics, producers, journalists, and fans from around the world flock to the French Riviera for an international cinematic feast. Canapé joined the flock this year and gives a peek of things to come.
say that not all of France is in France. The tropical island of Martinique is as much a part of France as Hawaii is a part of the USA. But it sits on the eastern edge of the Caribbean Sea. Small and French, it's also uniquely diverse and a part of the Americas. Canapé visits two of its artistic leaders, Dancer Lasoso and visual artist Abdafai. Depuis quelques années, je fais de la peinture et je travaille sur le trans du multimétissage. Ça veut dire qu'en Martinique, assez souvent, les gens, pour simplifier les choses, disent que nous sommes des métisses. Ou bien, pour simplifier les choses, ils disent que nous sommes des noirs. Et depuis une vingtaine d'années, je démontre à travers mon travail que nous ne pouvons ni être des métisses, ni être des noirs, mais nous sommes issus du multimétissage. Je suis une danseuse, je chante, je joue aussi un petit peu de percussion dans le domaine des traditions de la Martinique. Euh, je, suis, je pratique, euh, je fais de la recherche, euh, c'est un combat pour, pour le préserver et le diffuser à l'extérieur de la Martinique. Le peuple martinique, avant la venue de Césaire, n'acceptait pas leur africanité. Et Césaire, grâce au génie, hein, a transformé le mot nègre, a permis le mot nègre d'avoir une certaine forme de, de, de beauté, de dignité, de, de positivisme. Et donc, je me considère, moi, en tant que plasticien, un plasticien nègre, mais ça ne veut pas dire que je suis un plasticien noir. La Martinique, c'est essentiellement un peuple euh, venu d'Afrique, mais composé de, tout, de tous les peuples qui, qui nous ont rencontrés, soit par la force, soit par la douceur, de l'amour, parfois de la haine aussi. J'ai commencé par la danse, j'ai fait de la danse traditionnelle, la danse contemporaine. La peinture me permettait de me retrouver moi. Ça veut dire que c'était avec la danse, je faisais toutes les techniques, tout ce qu'on me demandait, mais je ne faisais pas ce qui était à l'intérieur de moi. Et la peinture m'a permis de retrouver ce moi-là. Et au fur et à mesure, le feu de la peinture est entré à récupérer toute l'énergie de la danse. Et depuis une vingtaine d'années, je fais de la peinture. La colonisation française, qui, 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 a, qui a tout fait pour qu'on rejette ce d'où on venait, ce qu'on était vraiment, pour nous calquer sur, sur, sur l'Occident, sur l'Occidental. Et il y a eu un combat des gens avant moi, euh, et nous-mêmes aussi, de notre, de notre génération, pour dire non, voilà ce qu'on est, et on, et on revendique cela, et on, et on veut que, que ça soit euh, porté de quelque chose, porté de la création. Même les jeunes rappeurs, que d'aujourd'hui, euh, prennent l'essence dans la musique du terroir, dans l'art du terroir. Il y a un conteur, il y a un maître de cérémonie qui est un conteur chez nous. C'est celui qui dit un petit peu les choses, celui qui est un petit peu avec le public, qui dit au public, voilà, voilà, voilà ce qui se passe. Le public est aussi participant. Le public n'est pas seulement assez pour me regarder. Parce que euh, dans la culture afro martiniquaise c'est le cercle. C'est des gens, les gens qui sont au milieu, qui, qui sont les, les pratiquants sont au milieu, mais les gens qui sont autour sont aussi des participants, donc le public. Donc il nous faut le compteur. Alors le compteur, il est là pour dire, il écrit, il crack, il écrit, les gens répondent, il est crack. Ce soir, vous êtes là, vous êtes king, c'est parce que vous voyez la Martinique, c'est où la Martinique, il écrit. Les gens répondent, il est crack. Hein? Donc il y, a, il y aura cette chose-là. Et après ça, euh, il y a moi, je vais faire un soliste. Moi, je pas là, moi, je suis je suis là, ok, c'est une belle bagaille, mon Dieu. C'est comme ça, je vous dis, je, je dis, je n'étais pas là, je suis arrivé maintenant. Ce soir, vous allez voir des belles choses. <rire> euh, moi, j'ai toujours pensé, quand j'étais plus jeune, que j'allais mourir à 30 ans. Parce que je disais que tous les grands, les grands hommes, hein, mouraient à 30 ans. Et à partir de, de 30 ans, quand j'ai vu 30 ans, une journée, j'étais vivant, je me suis dit que chaque jour, pour moi, c'est du bonus. Alors, chaque fois que je me réveille le matin, c'est comme un like motive. Euh, pour moi, je dois manger tout ce que je peux manger au niveau de, des secondes, des millièmes, pour que je sois heureux. Les moments qui me font le plus plaisir, c'est euh, la liberté. La liberté d'entreprendre, la liberté de faire, la liberté de dire non, la liberté de, de manger, de boire. Parce qu'on se rend compte que euh, plus de la moitié de la population n'a pas cette liberté-là. 
Alors je me dis que j'ai beaucoup de chance, alors je ne dois pas l'hypothéquer. Le... Ce qui est fort, c'est que tu le sais, c'est assez magique de voir que quand tu sais que tes grands-parents, tes ancêtres sont arrivés dans un bateau, dans une cale de bateau, euh, avec des chaînes comme ça aux mains, et que trois siècles et demi après, que tu es libre, et que tu vas dans les pays du monde découvrir justement ce qu'ils t'ont laissé, c'est de quoi être fier, non <musique>